Regular viewers may remember that earlier this year, I tested the brand new Citroen Berlinga. And whilst it wasn't very fashionable, you couldn't deny it was practical and spacious. Well, it turns out Citroen isn't the only company to make such a car because Peugeot does one as well. Say hello to the brand new Rifter. One of the clear advantages for going for the Peugeot Rifter is simply how much stuff you can get into it. Now, of course, if you have the car in seven seater mode, the boot isn't overly big. You only get 209 liters. But if you remove the rear seats, which is fairly easy, and as you can see, I've done so here, you will get a much more generous 1,050 liters worth of space. That is more than a Vauxhall Convoy Life XL, but exactly the same as a Citroen Blingo Multispace XL. As you can see, the opening for the boot is wide, practical, the load lip is low, so loading bigger, heavier items or dogs should be very easy indeed. But if you want even more space, you can, of course, fold down the middle row of seats, which is very easy because this car's got the magic flat seat system. By doing so, you will get 3,500 litres, which I'm sure you'll agree is very, very generous indeed. That is more than a Combo Life XL, but not quite as much as a Citroen Berlingo Multispace XL because that offers a whopping 4,000 litres. However, I'm sure you'll agree the Rifter is very, very usable. Now, as you may have noticed, the tailgate is pretty large. So if you're a bit too lazy to open it, or perhaps you're in an area where you can't open it fully, let's say a multi-story car park, you can instead use the rear window. I have a button down here. It pops out like so. And you can simply quickly pop something in like so. I've got my rucksack here. Step into the middle row and you'll find a good amount of space, even if you happen to be sat behind a taller driver or a taller front passenger. As always, the driver's seat has been set for me. I'm six foot two, so I am of course a taller chap. However, despite that, I've got a good amount of space back here. Knee room is pretty agreeable and I've got a good amount of leg room as well. Better still, I have acres of headroom. Look at that, I've got loads of it. I could wear a top hat in here. I was going to say I could wear a Busby. I think I'm pushing my, my luck a little bit, but I do have a hat with me. Okay, it is a fedora, but this is the biggest hat I own. But because I'm wearing a hat, it means I'm going to take it off to salute Peugeot for making a car that offers a good, well, a very good amount of space and practicality. However, I do have a complaint, two complaints, in fact, in regard to the fold-out table. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a handy feature to have, and I'm sure for a long family road trip, this will be very nifty indeed. But my two complaints are thus, and they are the same complaints I had uh, when I had the Blingo earlier this year. The first complaint is the cup holder. So it's not very versatile. You can only fit certain size bottles in here, uh, mostly, mostly of which um, is a 500 milliliter. And even then you need to kind of work its way in a bit. My second complaint is the tables don't lock down. Sorry, that's a bit dramatic. That, that's a bit over the top, I do apologize. But you get my point. What I'm trying to get at is the tables don't lock. So I had a say at Taraco earlier this year and the tables locked into place. These tables don't. So if you're merrily eating your lunch and the driver hits a pothole or a speed hump, you could end up with your lunch in your lap, which believe me, isn't a particularly good look. Anyway, let me move things on. The door bins aren't overly massive, but you can fit this bottle in there. As mentioned, this is 500 millilitres. You do need to coax it in a bit. You have a little bit of storage in the back of the front seats. So you can put one or two snacks in there. You've got a USB port, so those in the middle can charge their smartphone or their tablet on the go. And you even get storage underneath the floor. So if you lift up the floor mat, you will see you have a secret compartment where you can hide your naughty snacks. 
step into the front and you'll find more cubby holes than you could ever dream of. Although if you're dreaming of cubby holes, I think you ought to get out more. Anyway, my point is this, there's plenty of them. Let me step in and I'll go through them. Now, you don't get one door bin. Oh no, that's, that's not good enough at all for Peugeot. No, you get two. So you get a large one, which I can fit a 1.5 litre bottle into, just about. And I get a small one where I can fit a 500 milliliter bottle of drink in there, like so. You have a cup holder either side. So let me get my, actually I've got another bottle here. I can pop in there. You have, <laughs> so you have to keep up with me. You have a cubby hole here where you can pop your smartphone and as an optional extra, this car does have a wireless phone charging pad. Very handy indeed. There's a slot here just in front of the speedo. Another slot here behind the eight inch touchscreen. What else have we got? Oh yes, quite a large cubby down here. In fact, I can fit half my arm in there. Lift up the armrests. There's another cubby here, which is lined with fabric. Got some loose change in there, perhaps. You have not one, but two glove boxes. So you have a top mounted one, like so, which is pretty good for its size. And it also has a USB port in here. Uh, incidentally, there is a USB port on the touchscreen as well. There's another little storage area here and you have the second glove box down here, which doesn't have a lid on it, but it still offers a decent amount of space. In fact, I can pop my snacks in there and I've got plenty of space left over, but it doesn't stop there because there's also storage above my head up here. So yes, I think you would be very unfortunate to run out of space in this car because it has got bags of it. So the Rifter then scores very highly for practicality and space. Well done, Peugeot. Cool. You'd have to be a real hoarder to fill this car. You really would. That's all good and well, Aaron, but we'd love to see someone of your height try to squeeze themselves into the rear seats. Normally in a seven-seater, someone of my height doesn't usually fit. However, thanks to the Rifter's big boxy shape, the space back here is pleasantly surprising. Let me step in like so, which isn't overly dignified, I won't lie. I have to kind of crawl in. Ugh. There we go. Headroom is very agreeable. I've got loads of headroom, more than I was expecting, to be honest. And if I bring this seat back like so, you will see that I've got a good amount of knee room and a good amount of leg room as well. But if you want to make the boot even bigger whilst in seven seater mode, you can slide the rear seats forward like so, but obviously by doing so, you get less leg room. <sighs> That's better. Whilst I'm here, let me point out a few practical bits. You have a cup holder either side, a 12 volt socket on this side, as well as a little storage area as well. The only drawback of the rear seats is getting in or out of them isn't overly easy. It's not the most dignified way of doing it. Ah, I'm out. I almost fell over. So that's the practicality and space covered, but is it any good to drive? Let's kick off with the engine, which in this particular model is a 1.5 litre diesel offering 129 horsepower. This power is made to tow the front wheels via a choice of either a six-speed manual gearbox or an eight-speed automatic. The diesel engine works well. It's got a good amount of pulling power thanks to the 300 newton meters of torque. If you prefer that in an imperial unit, that is 221 pound feet. The engine, yes, it pulls well, and it's not too bad on fuel either. So on a combined run, it is able to offer 50.1 MPG. If you go for the eight speed automatic, it does increase ever so slightly to 50.3 MPG. In regard to CO2 emissions, if you go for the manual version, it emits 118 grams per kilometer. But if you go for the automatic version, that emits 119 grams per kilometer. For the first year of BED, you're looking at a payment of 210 pounds. For those of you wondering about the insurance groups, this particular car is insurance group 15, but if you go for lower trim levels, then the group does fall a little bit. The engine does become a little bit vocal when you get near the top of the rev range, but for the most part, it settles into the background 
rather nicely. It's quite a smooth engine, it's quite refined. So for a longer journey, I think this would be quite a good companion. And as I mentioned, it's frugal as well. Refinement on the whole is pretty good. Yes, there is a little bit of tire noise making its way into the cabin, but you don't really notice it. Okay, it has got louder, but that's because the road surface has changed. There we go, it's got a little bit quieter. Wind noise is pretty impressive, bearing in mind the shape and size of this vehicle. Yes, I've been pretty impressed by the wind noise. There is some, don't get me wrong, but it is well controlled. The ride of the Rifter, it's compliant, it's forgiving, it's soft. It's not quite a magic carpet ride, but I think for the majority of buyers, you'll find this to be quite a comfortable companion. The seats are comfortable as well, although I would want more bolstering for my legs. Uh, the base of the seats are quite flat, so your legs do flop about a little bit. They haven't got that support to keep them in place. As with other Peugeot cars, you get the quirky eye cockpit system. So you get this small steering wheel, which does feel a little bit disconcerting for a car of this size, and an instrument cluster, which has been raised up. So the idea is you look at the speedo over the steering wheel as opposed to through it. Now, in some Peugeot cars, this doesn't really work that well. However, for the Rifter, this system actually makes sense. And I'd argue this is probably the best deployment of eye cockpit that I've seen on any Peugeot model I've driven. Getting comfortable is quite easy. You've got a good amount of adjustment for both the steering wheel and the seat. You don't get any fancy electronic adjustment for the seats though, so it's all manual. But even so, it's pretty easy. Once again, it is time for Ask Aaron, the segment in which you guys get to ask me questions about whichever car I'm testing. So, here we go. Do the A-Team know you've got their van? Shh, I'm trying to keep it a secret. It's bad enough I've had to remove the red stripe to disguise it. Shh, you'll blow my cover. How quickly would it burn if you set it on fire? Blimey, that's a bit much, isn't it? However, I don't like to disappoint my audience, so let's find out. Oh, I've left my lighter at home. Never mind. Is it the same as the Vauxhall Combo? Finally, a sensible question. Thank you. Well, of course, the Vauxhall is now owned by the PSA Group. So in essence, yes, but the Combo life doesn't get quite as big a boot. So that's worth bearing in mind. Does it feel identical to the Berlingo to drive? Pretty much, I think you'd have to be hard pushed to find a clear and obvious difference in my opinion. And the last question, Okay, so for a family bus, would you have one? Yeah, you know what, I think I would. Of course, this isn't quite as stylish or fashionable as an SUV, but you simply can't beat it for space. Well, the Berlingo does offer a little bit more, but you get my point. And speaking of the Berlingo, I would argue the Rifter is a better looking car, although I know that is subjective. If I were to buy one of these though, now, some of you may be shocked by this, but I would probably go for the 8-speed auto, purely because I'm not a big fan of the manual gearbox in this car. And because this car is you know, effortless to drive, I think an auto would actually suit this car better, but that's merely my opinion. Anyway, that is Ask Aaron, done and dusted for another time. How much is the Rifter and what's included? It's available in three trim levels, Active, Allure and GT line, which have respective starting prices of £21,125, £22,705 and £24,455. If you fancy a seven-seater version, you'll have to add on £2,000. The Active trim level has standard features including air conditioning, leather steering wheel, Bluetooth, DAB radio, automatic lights, LED rear lights, lane keep assist, speed limit recognition, and autonomous emergency braking. Allure adds to list with electric rear windows, rear parking sensors, eight inch touchscreen, smartphone connectivity, fold out trays, overhead storage shelf, LED daytime running lights, and 16 inch alloy wheels. Last but not least, you have the GT line, which is the model I have here. This rain stopping version adds features such as Peugeot Connect SOS and assistance, dual zone climate control, tinted rear windows, opening tailgate window, power folding door mirrors, navigation, magic flat seat system, GT line styling, and 17 inch alloys. Well, 
Driving the Rifter is a pretty easy affair. The controls are light. It's very easy to see out of as well. That's one thing I really like about the Rifter. It may sound really sad and really nerdy, but yeah, the visibility is fantastic because every window is large, meaning that it is very easy to see out. However, this is a large car. So for the sake of parking, you may want to choose a trim level which has rear parking sensors. Otherwise, you may find this car is a little bit awkward to maneuver. Now, I would speak about the handling, but it almost feels like a redundant point because who realistically is buying this car for its handling qualities? Pretty much no one, but I will touch upon it very briefly. The handling is okay. It's quite roly-poly, as you would expect, because this is a big, tall car. It's not much steering feedback. The grip is okay. Yeah, that's handling covered. The, bra the brakes are pretty decent, although I do find that when you first modulate the pedal, you don't get much feedback or indeed stopping power. And then when you depress the pedal a bit more, I find there's a bit more braking than you were probably anticipating. I wouldn't say the brakes are like a light switch, but it kind of feels like that. First stab, you don't really get much, and you stab a bit more on the pedal, and all of a sudden the brakes are a bit harsh. In all honesty, there's not that much to dislike about the way how the Rifter drives. Yes, it's not very exciting, but it isn't designed to be, so I think it would be silly to have that kind of complaint. Things I don't like, the clutch pedal. I find it it's too high. Now, it may be a personal complaint, but yeah, I find the clutch pedal just feels a bit too high to operate. It's not very comfortable. The lane keep assist is a bit too eager to cut in, but if you really wanted to, you could turn it off. Although, you know, no point there's no point having a safety system if you're only going to turn it off but yeah i do find the lane keep assist is a bit too a bit too panicky let's say let's finish with safety as this is bound to be an important area for potential buyers thanks to standard features such as six airbags autonomous emergency braking speed limiter speed limit recognition and lane keep assist the rifter was able to secure a euro ncap rating of four stars with adult occupancy safety scoring an impressive 91 percent child occupancy safety isn't quite as good but with a score of 81 percent it's still respectable so there we have it the persia rifter a strong rival for the Bolingo, but with added style if you ask me. Yes, the Bolingo is a bit cheaper, but I'd argue the Rifter is better looking, although I don't think you can go wrong with either. The Rifter offers a decent amount of kit. The Rifter offers a decent amount of kit and safety, as well as loads of space and practicality, making it a fantastic choice of family car. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If so, be sure to like, subscribe and to ring my bell so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.